Medical Device Regulations, 510K Pre-Market Notification Principles. Welcome. Thank you for watching this introductory presentation on medical device regulations and the 510K pre-market notification process. We hope you find this presentation helpful and informative. For more information, please visit us at www.sigmabiomedical.com. In this presentation, we want to outline the principles of medical device regulations and the 510K pre-market notification process for an efficient product approval with the FDA. Instead of presenting the 510K process from a pure regulatory approach of outlining the 510K pre-market notification submission, we want to present the concept behind device regulations so it can be understood, taken into account, and effectively implemented from and during the product development and manufacturing process. We believe this approach will help medical device manufacturers stay in compliance, obtain market clearance, and provide a safe and effective product to their consumers. In this short presentation, we're covering the following topics. The need for medical device regulations, medical device compliance areas, FDA regulations for medical devices, and the 510K pre-market notification process. Need for medical device regulations. Medical products intended to diagnose, treat, manage, or mitigate a disease condition may cause injuries on patients. Product development and manufacturing engineers need to determine, analyze, and address potential risks medical products pose to patients. Risks include direct or indirect patient harm, wrong diagnoses, or improper treatment and disease management processes. Risks can be caused due to weak product design, lack of adherence and compliance to safety standards, material and component failures, or improper device use. Some of the risks and their effects include quality. Lack of proper controls and quality procedures cause weaknesses in the design and manufacturing, which in turn prompt the devices to malfunction. Labeling. Improper device labeling, including inaccurate or insufficient user instructions, can cause operator errors, increasing safety risks to patients. Electrical systems. Failures in electronic design can cause electrical safety hazards such as high leakage currents that can harm patients and operators. Electromagnetic interference. Improper grounding and shielding cause devices to emit or receive radiation beyond allowable limits, potentially affecting device operation. Radiated energy. Radiated energy beyond limits can cause injuries and bioeffects on biological tissues. And software. Software bugs and lack of software validation and verification can cause incorrect measurements, wrong diagnosis, and improper treatment settings. Benefits versus risks. We want to maximize benefits and minimize risks. Although medical devices can benefit and be a useful tool to improve the health of patients, they can also cause harm. We then need a balance between benefits and risks to ensure new medical products are developed, manufactured, introduced, and used in a safe and effective manner. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, has been established as an agency in charge of promoting and protecting public health. The FDA has the power to supervise and enforce regulations related to the marketing and safe and effective use of medical and health products. The FDA protects consumers. To keep a balance between benefits and risks of medical products, the FDA sets regulations for the manufacturing, marketing, and distribution of medical and health products, including medical devices, drugs, cosmetics, food, and biological products. The FDA establishes controls and regulations to protect consumers from the risks of medical and health products and the negative effect they can cause on the patient's and consumer's health. Medical Device Compliance Areas what are the main medical device regulation areas to ensure patient safety and device effectiveness? Labeling claims and intended use of products. Product development and manufacturing operations. Product safety and effectiveness. And product registration records customer complaints and adverse reactions. We will briefly discuss each of these areas of compliance. Intended use claims and labeling. What is the importance of intended use, proper claims, and labeling? To make sure the technology and intended use of the product have been previously clinically validated and proven effective. 
To make sure benefits and claims are substantiated by performance data as well as by scientific and clinical evidence. And to make sure products are properly labeled and safely used according with their intended use. Non-compliant cases. Here are some examples of non-compliant cases. Not validated technology, such as quack technology with a lack of clinical studies, or no scientific principles behind the technology and mechanism of action. Not validated claims and misleading statements. Devices that claim they can diagnose any type of disease, device diagnoses brain diseases, or augmented adjectives such as the best imaging technology. Or insufficient instructions for use. Instructions that are not clear to the user. No warning messages, no safety precautions, no declared indications for use. The importance of product safety and effectiveness. To minimize risks and to ensure patient safety. To minimize adverse product interactions. And to ensure effectiveness for their intended use. Here's a failure mode case, a software bug, a lack of training, and improper labeling. The product was a cancer treatment device. It was a 25 mega electron volt radiotherapy machine capable of delivering both x-rays and electrons, 200 rads of electrons or 25,000 rads of x-rays. There was a system setting error. An error on selection coupled with a software bug caused the beam to not reset and not control the maximum output. The error effects. The patient received 25,000 mega electron volts directly. The product displayed an error message of malfunction 54, but the technician fired the device two more times anyway, and four months later, the patient died. Six ways to product safety. One, manage risk. Implement risk management policies and procedures for products, manufacturing processes, and business operations. Two. Control the design. Follow design controls and engineering standards in product development. Three, manage quality. A proper quality management system needs to be implemented in operations. Four, use safe materials. Materials and components need to be medical grade or generally recognized as safe. Five, test and validate. According to safety standards, to make sure the product is safe, testing can reveal weak and non-compliant areas. And six, monitor device use. Follow and document customer complaints and take proper action. FDA regulations for medical devices. To protect consumers and patients, the FDA regulates and establishes controls for the marketing, manufacturing, and distribution of medical devices and health products. FDA regulations depend on the type of product and their risk level. The higher the risk, the more strict the controls and regulations. The controls and regulations are aimed to maximize benefit, minimize risks, and guarantee a safe and effective use of products. Medical device classification. Medical devices are classified by the FDA and grouped into 16 medical categories referred to as panels. A medical device is assigned to a class based on the level of control to assure product safety and effectiveness. The classes are class one, class two, and class three. Device classification depends on the risk level of the device. That is, the risk the device poses to the patient and or the user is a major factor in the class it is assigned. Class 1 includes devices with the lowest risk, and Class 3 includes those with the greatest risk. Medical device registration. Medical products need to be listed or registered with the FDA before they can be marketed in the U.S. This ensures a good level of control by the FDA on the product marketing and distribution. Prior to being listed, and depending on classification, medical devices might need to go through a process of device evaluation by the FDA. The process evaluates product safety and effectiveness, as well as validity of claims, intended use, indications for use, and labeling. To start the process, a submission seeking market clearance needs to be started with the FDA by the manufacturer or sponsor of the product. Types of product submissions. Two types of medical device clearance submissions exist, 510K pre-market notification and pre-market approval, PMA. Some devices are exempt from these submission requirements and need only to be listed. The class to which a particular medical device is assigned and its risk level determines the type of submission required for FDA market clearance. 
If the device is classified as class 1 or 2, and if it is not exempt, a 510K will be required for marketing. For class 3 devices, a pre-market approval application PMA will be required unless the device is a pre-amendments device and PMAs have not been called for. In that case, a 510K will be the route to market. 510K pre-market notification process. The FDA provides a general guidance on how to submit a 510K pre-market notification. It can be searched on the web under FDA 510K guidance. Special guidance documents exist depending on the product type and product code. The guidance document specifies ways to demonstrate safety and effectiveness for the type of product being reviewed. The 510K process is mainly aimed to demonstrate the product is safe and effective for their intended use and that the product is substantially equivalent to an already cleared product. Substantially equivalence, SE, implies that the technology and action principle for the intended use of the product has been previously evaluated and found effective for other similar products using the same technology with similar manufacturing processes and materials. The action principle and technology do not introduce new safety or effectiveness concerns as it has been previously evaluated and demonstrated in scientific and clinical literature for the intended use. In many cases, it also means that similar products have been on the market prior to 1976. For this reason, clinical data most likely will not be needed. The FDA will thus rely upon well-designed bench and animal testing to demonstrate adequate performance. The product has been tested and by performance data found safe and effective for their intended use. Product labeling is according to the intended use. Claims are substantiated by scientific and technical evidence and user instructions ensure safe use of the product. Main elements of a 510K submission document. Product code and classification. This section will tell the FDA the classification panel for the subject device so the submission gets directed to the proper review team for evaluation. Device description. This will provide the FDA reviewers with a clear and concise description of product features, specifications, functionality, technology, and mechanism of action. Predicate device comparison. This section is aimed to compare the subject product to an already cleared device to demonstrate that they are similar in technology, mechanism of action, materials, and manufacturing process, and thus no new safety or effectiveness concerns are introduced. Performance data to address risks to health. This is aimed to demonstrate safety and or compliance with safety standards. It is also aimed to show that product features have been successfully verified and validated for their intended use, Risk management needs to be demonstrated. Materials and component characterization. If applicable, this section is aimed to demonstrate that patient contact materials are biocompatible and do not cause or pose risks to health. And labeling. This is aimed to show the FDA reviewers that proposed manuals, brochures, and promotional materials provide sufficient information for the safe and effective use of the product according with the intended use. The FDA will review labeling to make sure no unsubstantiated claims are included. Administrative forms and payment. The submission needs to include proof of payment of FDA fees for 510K review, medical device user fee cover sheet, form FDA 3601, certification of compliance with clinicaltrials.gov data bank, FDA 3674, cover letter, indications for use, 510K Summary, Standards Data Report for 510Ks, FDA 3654, and Truthful and Accuracy Statement, 21 CFR 807.87K. Some initial tips to prepare a 510K. Find and analyze similar devices, predicate devices. From the FDA Medical Device Database or Web Search, find devices that are similar in technology, mechanism of action, and intended use to your device. Find from the results product code, classification, and 510K summary. From the 510K summary, determine product description and performance data or testing standards, if included. Analyze applicable regulations. From the product code, find applicable regulations. Check guidance and from there required testing to address risks to health. Analyze the recommended documentation. And set up an approval strategy. Determine approvable product features, functionality, and their corresponding testing, validation, and verification activities. 
Define intended use and claims so these are similar to predicate devices. Make sure the labeling is correct and addresses all required items. Do a checklist of 510k requirements. Timeline of events to prepare a 510k. This is an example timeline. Five ten K Project Gantt sample. Here we present some example tasks and their duration. The timeline shown differs based on product type as well as on existing and needed testing and performance data when the five ten K process starts. Timeline for five ten K clearance. It starts with a five ten K submitted, then administrative review, interaction, and acceptance, then interaction with an FDA reviewer and feedback to solve issues. And finally, SE letter and market clearance. Get in touch with us, www.sigmabiomedical.com. Thanks for watching.